Okay. Yes. Here we are. Uh, PCGS Intrigo uh, number one. Same thing as I know. Um, let's go. Okay. And if you read through it, if you can read through it aloud, then it keeps the pacing and I can, I'll, I'll hear it back like for the first time because it, if I just read it, I'm reading what I've already written and read and written and read, but I hear it back from you. Uh, yeah. PCGS Sustainable Design Lab Intrigo number one. See the big picture. Kohain starts singing pure imagination as he walks around the two set areas of innovative Ed Kohain's interpretation of the Gene Wilder Willy Wonka song from the 1970s is an homage or tribute, as Megan pointed out, two versions of the recent years. The first, so is the backstage version of John Groban. Josh Groban. Sorry. Um, Second, thematically, is the climate crisis education and imagination and solution version by Barbara Streisand. Um, uh, this sentence is annoying to me. Wait, this is, I'm, not, I'm not supposed to criticize the script. I'm so, you're making a video out of this, right? Yeah. I mean, you so, can... Then it doesn't matter. This, this sentence is obnoxious to read because there's a bunch of... Uh, um, Spaces where there should be. Uh, oh yeah, no, know. but don't worry about that because this is just this. This is for us as producers <laughs> to know what we're going to see on screen. This is not what you're going to see on screen, right? So you don't have to worry about that. We start in the innovative education green room where actors prepare to go on set. Kalhane is putting on a multicolored jacket, um, reminiscent of Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. On a television monitor in front of him is the image of a utopian city reminiscent of tomorrow. Um, is the image on this TV screen of the future or the past? Is this gleaming metropolis tomorrowland or yesterday? Does it depict a good picture or a good place or a bad place? I guess it depends on the stories that we tell about it. And how they move us emotionally, whether or not they move us so much that we choose to make them move. Let's see how this moves you. Colhane hits play on the remote. And the image on the screen begins to show a civilization collapsing as cities of flooding. The pollution is despoiling the landscape. I, there's something in the background. I have a. Uh, wait. Uh -huh. A century ago, filmmakers brought ideas like this to life by creating motion pictures. Of course, these were actually static pictures that moved on a reel of film across a projection lamp and lens at 24 frames images per second. Even the illusion of modern through persistence of vision and emotion. The problem, as you will note if you watch the famous apocalypse speech seen at the end of the Disney film Tomorrowland, you'll find it in our syllabus. Do you remember when we watched that? Most I remember. It was a great movie. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised that Disney made it because it's, it's, not a, it's not a really kids movie. It is a great movie and it's quite dystopian. Yes. Is that, is that we allowed many of the most dystopian visions of the human story to pers persist to the point where we really are on the verge of making the move? As my father, John Cohen, who is the screenwriter and host of this television special backstage at Disney, also in our syllabus, co-screenwriter with science fiction author uh, Ab Ray Bradbury on the, of the Disney film Something Wicked This Way Comes, one of the book's special effects in the movies, how they do it, used to say, movies are meant to move you, they put emotion in pictures. The question has always been, who gets to move who? Right now, most people agree that society is moving in the wrong direction, and yet we all know we have the tools and techniques to reverse global warming, to end habitat loss and species extinction, and to end pollution, poverty, and injustice. While we are still moving towards the goal at the end of history as la la I read too fast, has a lot to do with who is telling the story and where and how we are trying to move it. Uh, why do you put these in different colors? Uh, I don't know. It shouldn't be. I don't know why it's in green. Yeah, it's hard to read. I may have to put my brightness down. It says... I, I, I can read that. What it says... You okay. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. But what if you could learn and apply the tools and techniques of great storytelling, visual media production, and world building? What if you could be the person making decisions about how to move people to action? You could rewrite history and make the story have a happy ending. Kellyanne stops the movie of destruction playing on the screen and puts it into rewind. Music starts to play in the background, a haunting arpeggio. 
Pauline starts to move toward the door. By the way, this is a great script, but with this being um, your speech, mm-hmm. all the way uh, up to down here, I would maybe shorten it about like one or two paragraphs. I yeah, they... slightly. Maybe I, 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 I would leave out um, such things um, as uh, noting what you have in your syllabus, and uh, this is great, but this is for in the course. Good, okay. They just get the theme over with. They feel that too. Okay, so I will then remove that and put it in the course. I mean, put it, yeah, put it in the actual. Um, they're going to have a place, a reading place in Canvas, and this would not be on screen. Yeah. <clears throat> This course, being developed at USF's Innovative ed- Education Studios, gives you the opportunity to explore and learn those tools and techniques, the ones used by the news, by Hollywood and documentary television professionals, and by the great team here at USF's Innovative Ed, to help you help humanity implement other real-world tools and techniques of infrastructure and planning so we can help humanity to implement actionable strategies for saving the real world. We give you a backstage tour of where the magic begins and introduce you to the people who make things move so I can show you what I'm talking about. I don't know. You see, I, I invoke Napwist. Uh-huh. Um, nitpicks are problems when I say so. Uh, uh, see, is it important that it's being developed, for instance? Like, I, I would leave any and all credentials out until you are in the course credits. I don't think necessarily, unless you, like, play them in like it's a movie trailer, you know, like, develop by or something. But I wouldn't put it in a speech or something, because that just makes it sound uh, like an advertisement, but like like a commercial one. In other words, if I was, you if know? I said this course <laughs> Being uh, this course being developed here, and I just point to a sign that says USF Innovative Education I, I, Studios. I would, I, I would, I would not. I just, does it matter that it's being developed there? Because the, it's it's what it's about what's in the course, not where it's being developed. This isn't okay. There. And also, you can. You, what I would tell you, if you have the um, means to do that, what would be cool is if you want these credentials in there, play them in like P, uh, like actor names that show up in like a trailer with USF's Innovative Education Studios. <laughs> How would I do that though? In the middle of there. I mean, yeah, I could have just, I could have it fly on the screen. Fade and then have it pop up. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I mean. Like okay. uh, switch the scene every couple seconds like a trailer, you know? With, yeah. Like with uh, Brent Razor or something. I don't know. Oh, I see. So it would be it would be text that would appear on the screen as as you go to the cut. Yeah. 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 Yeah, okay, I think I, I think we can work with that. Okay, good good quote, I mean, good comment. Yeah. <coughs> uh, we track Calhoun as he walks out into the hall where there are awards and cases for TV production. The irony is that whether we are talking about creating fantasy worlds or improving the real world, both skill sets which we use to envision sustainability and realize sustainability require what Disney called imagineering. The ability to imagine different possibilities and then engineer the best among them. And as we teach in our vin- you know, envisioning sustainability class, for which this course is the laboratory workshop component, all require all require the ability to harness your pure imagination. The room starts singing as he walks down the hall to the first day. Mm-hmm. 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 I, I don't think I, I know the thing. Anyway, it, uh, um, Cohen enters the room, shaking hands with the camera and technical artist set up for shooting and says to the camera, Welcome to the green screen room and the magical folks who bring it to life. Steps onto the set and as he sings, it comes to life with worlds of pure imagination made in 2D cartoon animation style with Mary, and Mary Poppins. Right here, again, nitpick. Well, is the course about the students developing something yeah. in the green screen room? Yeah. Or using green screens? Yeah. Yep. Then put then then make it ma- make the trailer about them. Call out to them. Look, make it make it pop. Um, you see here the magical folks who bring to life, as you will too. Like, okay. Just, just include them. Include my journey. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. 
He steps on the <coughs> and as he sings, it comes to well, life. We'll begin with a spin, traveling the world of my creation. What we'll see will defy explanation. As Kyan starts to bridge 3D pixels, no, no. Uh, uh, objects and characters appear in the foreground okay. before him to interact with. The camera pulls back from the confident monitor, working at the... Uh, I still skip. Revealing the innovative Ed Team movie, moving the tracking cameras around the stage and working at the computer monitors to manipulate it. Jared Brown says, actually, none of these defies explanation. And in fact, explaining how we achieve this special effect is what this course is all about, right? You betcha, replies Colleen. If you want to view paradise, simply look around and view it. Anything you want to, do it. Want to change the world? There's nothing to it. Colleen steps off the stage and says to Jared, This new green screen room is amazing. Chase the crew. You guys must love your jobs. You must love your lives. They nod enthusiastically. Sh shall we show them the new LED screen room? He turns to the camera close up and says, I like to call it the Mandalorian room. That one is unreal. The handheld camera follows coming out of the room as he walks into the LED room scene. There is no life I know to compare with pure imagination. Um, the instrumental begins as Colleen talks to Will and the crew, and they just... He froze. Hello? Hello, hello? Hello? He's still okay. in the background. He changed. Uh, do you have commas in here? Because it, it's, it's confusing reading this sometimes. Okay, I need to put more commas. Like, Grammarly didn't pick it up. But no, if, 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 you under, if you understand it, it's fine. It's just very confusing for me right now. But is, if this okay. is a script, right? You're, this yeah. Is, uh, this is not for the students. So. Right. Just look what we can do within the digital. Just look what we can do in the digital realm with some LED lights and computers. Once, of, once of course, we learn the skills and tricks of the trade. Each of us now has the ability to envision the kind of world we feel works best, and we decide which of our imaginary worlds we want to make as real as we seek to create a better world of the people, by the people for the people. Now, of course, you may say it's a whole lot easier when things stay in the world of pure imagination. Surely we can't do these things in the real world, can we? Here's the funny thing about the human story. Something we discuss in our envisioning sustainability class and something we want to engage with in this companion lab. All of human history has been about our collective journey from being non-conscious and therefore non-thinking animals to beings who spend most of our time thinking and imagining. Things to think about. To th beings thinking out loud by telling stories. To creatures thinking out louder by creating artwork and literacy by painting and sculpting, and writing those stories down through art and symbols, to animated being, an, anima, is this animators? Animated, animated beings. Animate. Oh, oh, being, I, I, I forgot the S, never mind. To animated beings animating those stories through motion art, pictures, to modeling the settings of those stories using props and other 3D objects and environments and creating simulations, to thinking out loudest by engaging in the actual world of pure imagineering, in this course, we can take you through the first essential steps, giving you skills for digital storytelling and world building. Right up to the threshold of engineering real space and places in the real world. How you translate those image vi imagined visions of a better world into the engineered world of tangible realities that could stop the collapse of our stop the collapse of our civilizations and ecosystems is the big step we would like you, as PCGS sustainabilitists, to take. But it doesn't really require any special effect. Thinking out louder and louder until we collectively yeah. think out the loudest, th think the loudest we can, we can co and conjure our true utopias. E utopias? Is this? No, it, it, we, we uh, deliberately put the E in because it means the true or good place, whereas utopia without is oh. ambiguous. <laughs> so we don't, we don't delete the E. There's utopia with an E, there's utopia without the E, which is ambiguous, and then there's utopia, O-U-T-O-P-I-A, which means the no place or not place, and then there's dystopia, so we deliberately use the E. It's the ancient Greek for it. But it is utopia, right? It's not yeah. utopia, because that's what I'm using for your username. Okay. Right. And experimental prototype communities of tomorrow into existence is merely the logical consequence of starting down the path of a better world. The 
The difference today is that you, that I, that all of us can now participate in that age-old evolutionary process. For the first time, we have technologies that can be taught and made available to everybody. From script to screen, the realization of the entire new interactive world digitally and online, that we can all play in. Are you ready, player East Carolina Union? Let's go. I like this. I like this. This is good. This is intriguing. I would. It, the thing is, this is a video, so it's hard to say how it will come out. Mm -hmm. But I feel like this is, if this is speech, yeah, is, then shorten it. Because that is so much that has to be read. That I, I feel it's something like this, or you have to make pauses in between to let certain keywords hit. Okay. Uh, you can't leave it like this because saying that will sound like, like a. Uh, well, yeah, it can't be. It can't be me in front of a single image standing there talking. Uh, what I haven't done, you're right. I have to go back in here, and give the cues of what we cut to when we have each paragraph, and it's not uh, in. Cut the paragraphs apart. No, no matter how like small they are, like just mm -hmm. put a, put like a stop in here. Okay. Or something I don't know. Like, don't make them longer than like four, five to six uh, sentences. Yes. Like just and try right. to keep them with sort hitting sentences. Like you wanna you wanna make people feel interested with punctuality, with um, direct answers to what they're looking for in a course in a, uh, in this program. M make them engaged. Uh, uh, engage them actually and uh, make them feel engaged. Right. And yeah, they're, they're long speeches. They're, they're taking part. They're not going to be like reading through all of this. They want to also procreate. So. <laughs> procreate. <laughs> yes. you, mean, you mean have sex? What? Okay. Oh, am oh. I stupid? I mean, prosume. I'm sorry. You mean co You meant co-create. <laughs> Okay, so it turns out it's not in English and Spanish. I'm gonna switch back to my native Spanish dialect. And uh, where am I? Um, yeah. So, th thank you very much. Uh, no, no hablo inglés. Uh, yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Never I'll, mind. I'll, never mind. I'll work on that. Okay. So let's see. Let's look at the at the second one. See how it. Because I want to see the flow. If you if you can do it, seeing how they all flow together is really important, because they'll probably watch them all in in one class. They'll watch the intrigos to find the entire. Uh, but like that's long. Course. I would actually. I would. I don't know how you could do it on campus, but you could bring them in also for. Um, you know, for the ones that aren't on campus, like uh, the, the, the ones from overseas. I don't know. You have online? The online? Yes, that's what, I, that's what I mean. You should make them accessible, but not in one class, but like drip, dripple them in, like all six. That, yeah, that's what you have them in a uh, singular form for. Yeah. That's why you have them individually. Like, don't show all at once. <laughs> that's kind of overwhelming. Especially right. with these longer speeches. Like, you won't be, by the second one, you won't be able to remember the first one. Right. No, they're in the 16 weeks of the course. They're supposed to watch one intrigo every basically two weeks. So they, and then at the end they don't have to watch them. It could be every every three weeks, uh, but it's two and a half weeks basically. And the intrigos will be like 10, 15 minutes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Me. Oh, Correct. Right. Yeah, that's totally. Good. All right. Let's take you a look at. One? Yeah, I'm going to do as many as we can. Oh, yeah, we can do all six. Okay, okay. let's do them. Oh, you're going to earn a lot today. Nah, I won't take that long. How much, how much did you, you've already earned, you did 31 minutes before that you've recorded, but I think I you've done more. 31 minutes recording. I've done two hours. Two hours. How do we uh, report that? How do we report that? What? You should, you wait, should. Wait, 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 wait. You should be recording it so I have a complete document of it. I mean, obviously, I... I'm not mistrusting you. I just it should be all recorded because that's what I'm doing with my students. They have well, to. I, I was on calls with you when it began and then when it ended about. So it was like two hours. Okay. You can check that. Oh, just random chat. Um. So then, then definitely I'll order that Warhammer book for you. Yes, please. Okay. And um. Right. 
the thing right. is, I don't start, usually I don't start recording unless I'm actually, like, I have to check all the equipment and then I, I yeah. read it before I do it. So I don't mess up. That's good. And my students... But I can just... I can just... I can just do it if you want it from scratch. I can just start, hey, I'm Killian, let's do this. You might as well, because I want my students to get in the habit of that. Ultimately, it becomes understood. At least we'd have a record of how long, it, in, on average, it takes to get all set up, which is billable time. So, yeah, probably. And then, and then after a while, once we get a sense of what the average is, then you don't have to do that anymore. It just becomes a sort of a, 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 um, a bonus thing you put on, like an extra time for setup and stuff. In the freelance world, that's certainly true. Do you know why consultants charge so much more than salaried workers? Like I had a friend who was a consultant. He said, when you're a salaried worker, you have your health care taken care of, you have insurance, you have a uh, guarantee. Yes. Yeah, and when you're a salaried worker, you have benefits for the company, the company you work for. You have uh, health, you have, you may even get a car with paid insurance. You get, um, yeah. you get discounts if it's a, if it's a, business right and so when you're a consultant working freelance you have to pay for all that yourself and so you bill like maybe when you're working salaried you're billing forty dollars an hour but when you're a consultant you bill 80 because you have to take care of all those expenses yourself and it's generally anywhere from one and a half to two times salary when you're doing it independently unless you're super yeah, popular yeah. But like, like lawyers take a lot, but like still they're basically, uh, they're freelancers, contract, contractors. Yeah, exactly. So and that's how they... Off of cases. And you and have in to... In Germany, they all wage. Lawyers always take the same wage in Germany. Except really? for like under the hand. Uh, usually, yes. I think like it's 150 now or something. But um, like between 150 and 200, you can like go 10 or 10 upper band. You can give bonuses but then there's high-end lawyers you know the people who deal with um sketchy mafia people those uh, <laughs> get a lot more yeah yeah but, Absolutely. But i mean when working with the mafia huh <laughs> yeah <laughs> You're getting... I, I mean i prefer okay. i prefer being salaried because that's what i'm used to and it gives me confidence like we have to make car payments for the next five years so it would be stressful for me to have to scrounge around like my dad did his whole life when he, when he not his whole life, he was a, a salaried worker for Newsweek until 1972. And then he quit and he went freelance. And then life was very tough. And my mom had to handle the bulk of the steady earnings because there were good years and bad years for my dad. And I just, I didn't like it. So I decided to go into teaching because it's stable. You don't make as much money, but you don't have that anxiety. I know I could make a lot more if I was a consultant or a freelance, but it's just too much stress for me. I like to know that the money's coming in, especially right, when you have a family. I like what you write. Yeah, a okay. Big word. Big word. Ahead. Okay, start. Go ahead and read that. Let's just go into this. Uh, in the beginning, there is always nothing. A void. And, oh wait, we start with a black screen with a cartoonized blinking. In the beginning, there is always nothing. Avoid an emptiness we can't avoid until we think and say, Let there be lights. He's a good reader. Now we see him listen. surrounded by no man wi whiteness it's holding a clip. Because if this camera is too soft, three floating cameras are playing the scene. Action! He clacks his clipboard and looks around into the nothing, waiting for something to happen. But what is the action? What are we supposed to say about this no man wasteland? of an environment. Indeed, what are we to say about even more sophisticated worlds of our imagination? And what are we supposed to do in those worlds of our technical creation? Creation starts with an idea, the word. The word. We see no. a comic style of thought balloon appear out of Colhane's mouth mouthing the word. Then no. as he speaks, the words appear in the type place being typed out in real time because we this time time time. Getting your words into some future and then finding an audience, a cartoon audience with pointed heads, reminiscent of the people in Nielsen's The Point of the Rand Then getting your ideas out to the world, world in a compelling, attention grabbing, and attention holding way, whereas we call it in our envisioning sustainability class, thinking out loudest. Well, that is a process. 
Friends, Romans, countrymen, lend me your ears of corn. The crowd boos. But uh, as uh, sustainabilists, we shall, of course, make sure they are non-GMO corn grown organically in a polyculture without any artificial fertilizer or pesticides and scratch it. Perhaps we can do agriculture tree cereals instead. Crowd cheers. So, uh, first of all, we call it Bilanz in German. Are you still there? Oh my god, I hear myself. Please help me. What? You hear yourself what? Oh, is that oh, that's because I, I unplugged. I put in the unplugged the headphones. Okay, sorry. Go ahead. Sorry, it's, it's causing feedback. Uh -huh. so, you know, so this is very good. I like this. I like it. It's quick and concise, and it and it um, it goes well with the idea of um, attention grabbing, attention holding. We want this to be short and sweet. Um, this is good but you have to display it fast. This has to be like a quick joke where you might even have to pause to get it. Okay, you mean like... Because th this take, would take up to... You gotta, you gotta say this really fast. So I was gonna to do it, it... To keep it funny and it... Right. I was gonna do it like this. I was gonna go, Otherwise, friends... Okay. I'll, I'll show you the reading yes, as I... As I, said. I was gonna go, friends, Romans, countrymen, lend me your ears uh, of corn. Uh, but, but as sustainabilities, we shall, of course, make sure they're from non-GMO corn, grown organically, in a polyculture without the artificial fertilizer, pesticides, and... Oh, scratch that. Perhaps we can do agroforestry with tree cereals instead? Yay! That's good. I like that. Okay. Yeah, it, it's, it's very Monty Python. As he is saying these things, the hand of God, giant arse animate-like hand or something like the hand, Terry Gilliam, used in Monty Python, draws what he is saying, first drawing a black and white cornfield, then erasing it, then replacing it with a colorful thing first. In the, in the web? Scene. The background changes into a black and white classroom from, from the pre-computer era. That makes it lots of what? Wait, wait, wait one second, wait one second, Killian, wait one second. Are you saying there's a lot of similar? Yes, there's supposed to be. This is a little bit of overlap. A lot of overlap? How, how, how come people would choose one? With what? Very, very because, because the intrigos, the intrigos overlap, but the tutorials and the classes are completely different. One is technical and one is philosophical. Right, but the, so there's the supposed to be enough. Not really. If you right. actually watch them, they. I watch them. Okay, I don't see them but as that similar, similar. Mm -hmm. but I, I hear your I thought. Just like you're trying, you're yourself well, the ideas of thinking out loud, thinking out loud is yeah, overlap. To, She's comparing them to the intrigos uh, that is I she did. comparing them to the old one? Yeah, to the ones that I did for envisioning sustainability. The ones with the jet pack and stuff. Yes, uh huh. Yes. They they are similar from the setup, but I, I find them different. He finds them different. I think you're right. They they overlap in, in message, but they're the visuals are so different and so updated, and the and the take the on is, it. The thing is also, yes, and it's it's both about sustainability, so it's going to be overlapping in some cases right. without you being able to do anything about it. Right. Um, yeah, I want to make reference to it. So here okay, we are. Mm -hmm. it, but is that, by the way, if that course is still running, yeah. then you should also promote, wait, well, you are promoting it, but yeah. it's good that you promote it with the overall picture of sustainability in mind. Good. Um, good. So here we are, in a classroom in the 2020s filled with high-tech computers, and yet we are often seen to be rushing headlong into the 1950s, starting out with something you obviously all know how to do, learning your thoughts and red words. Writing a paper, forget the fact that we hardly use paper anymore. Why in my day we actually use pens and pencils? We're creating an essay about something. Essay is first like to try, as in to try and convince somebody that your ideas, ideas are right. Perhaps you will write about it. Um, by the way, uh, uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Well, I'm going to take your idea, I'm going to take your idea. And the stuff that's in the parentheses, like SAA, I'm going to put that in a thought balloon or a text balloon on the side so it doesn't break up the narrative. Is that better? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> also, uh, this year. This year, please, as well. Yeah. Yeah, that would be a little side thing. It'll say, forget, it'll, forget the fact that we don't use paper anymore. And people can either read it or not as they, as they like, but it'll appear on the screen. <laughs> Yet while you have spent years and years over the past few decades of the 21st century practicing the same old, uh, same, the same old, same old skill, you may not have given the requisite amount of thought and practice to where your trial balloons out to go, ought to go. 
Well, idea is about making the world a better place sink or float in the court of public opinion. We think your thought balloons should go from script to screen or to some sort of larger, louder venue that more people can see and hear than just your teacher or your class or boss or a few coworkers. We're in a race to the bottom of our race to the top, depending on who gets what ideas out there, at a time when democracy and freedom of thought hang in the balance, and unfortunately, the majority ends up being merely the inv individuals or groups with the loudest voice. As we tell our fellow, fellow sustainabilityists, as our, <coughs> in our envisioning sustainability, our scholars <coughs> and activists and communicators is really about thinking, thinking out loud, thinking out louder, and finally, thinking out loudest. The loudest you can think by cooperating with others. Gestures to the crowd now happily harvesting fruits and nuts. To manifest our thoughts as creations in the real world, or at least in some shared world of mutually agreed upon values and infrastructure and appropriate technology. The character who looks like Oblio from the point wearing a pointed cap says, he's got a point there. Well, yes, that is the point of this, of course. And I dare, I dare I say, and I dare say our entire program, finding ways to effectively get our, our points across to others. In fact, that's how we make our points in this course, both our rhetorical points and our credit points. We offer many ways to make points. We won't restrict it to our choice, but in the most effective way to make a point, it turns out, is to tell a story. This year, Mm -hmm. It sounds like you're trying to justify something. Uh huh. And <laughs> that is kind of that sounds like a bait. That sounds like a bait. So we want to say in this, we want to get the students to understand how they make points in the class. Is it that we won't restrict you? That seems like I'm. Should I take that line out? Because I want to say we offer many ways to yes. make points. Okay, so I take out, we won't restrict you. Would the crowd still cheer when they hear we offer many ways to make points? Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Once upon a time. That's also how we make history. And in our, and in our courses, we want you to use every technique and technology possible, including one to to tell your story, to help make our future perfect or at least better. That was always the point of our technology, wasn't it? That was where no, all the inventors and creativity were working, right? Producing labor, curtailing people, no, 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 no. curtailing suffering, eliminating inefficiency and waste. And now we no, have no, 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 no. Right? And don't get me started yet on the so-called tragedy of the commons. We'll discuss that trope a lot in all of our classes. I like to call it the tragedy of those who fail to communicate or are prevented from communicating. Preventing tragedies is mostly about good school communication. If you can use any technology to improve our ability to, to communicate, radio, TV, the internet, social media, games. AI, particularly in the service of promoting and implementing our United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. We seem to be better off as a species. Tragedies generally happen to those populations cut off from playing a substantive role, role in the dialectic that would otherwise move the sustainable development needle forward. Because we have to the know-how and the technology to meet all 17 of our sustainable development goals right now. Some would argue that we've had them since the industrial age began. The futurist Buckminster Fuller wrote out loud that we've easily had them since the early 1970s, shortly after we made it to the moon and back. Surrounding Colin, we see cartoon images of angry crowds and rioting and boots stomping arms, the usual tropes of tragedy. Over these images, we see classic books from our art academic literature are floating into view like newspaper headlines and old newsrooms. As we learn from theorists like Edward Bernays in his post-World War I classic propaganda, and from the legendary Professor Noam Chomsky, author of, author of Manufacturing Consent, The Political Economy of Net, the Mass Media, and from luminaries like Marshall McLuhan and Murray Bookchin, and so many others of the stories we tell ourselves that get the loudest voice, that get the most press, that get the most dramatic, dramatic music, dramatic music swells beyond the images. Excited. Yes. 
But unfortunately, these tend to be the stories told to us by those who could profit off of our ignorant and our irresponsible consumption patterns or told by the fearful and clamor of fascistic or fear of or panicking voices. Pick your poison, spinning stories of eschatological, that means end times, pessimism, doom, room filled with finger pointing and othering, and some will tell you, making it really easy for drug dealers and pharmaceutical companies and fossil fuel fed junk food farms and junk food factories and the gun lobbies and the military and drug pool complex and property and health and drug providers. And yada 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 to make a killing. He was all playing on the surfboard, riding on an audio wave. As he searched the audio waves, you hear the scrubbing of the digital audio behind him replacing the music. This needs to be shortened. If this yeah. is good, this needs to be shortened. This is for in the course. This yeah, is not okay. long here. Neither but, do these as as you quote again. But but the thing is, if I put them in the course and not the intrigo, and does it go? This is nice, but this is way too long. If you can shorten that without repeating. Okay, but if I do that, if it just goes into text, there's a risk that nobody will read it. If it goes into the into the video tutorial, there's a chance people will skip right through it. So the challenge is to make this is the academic stuff. Like all the other is kind of fluff. This is actual knowledge. Oh, uh, there's always that risk. Can read it. Also, yes. See, the thing is, yes, people can read over it, but they can also skip it in a video. So it really doesn't matter. And this is not belonging in an intrigo. This is. Too deep for an for an opening uh, uh, video. Wow. Yeah, I've also, had. Th- um, I've, but I've had this conversation. The intrigos are for when people. See the course, Dad. Yeah. You're selling. You're saying the course is 16 weeks, and they get an intrigo every two weeks. Yes. Two and a half. Yeah. Why did they get the intrigos in the course when they're already in it? Like, what was the sense of that? Why don't you like post them to like the whole university to get people into the course? Oh, they, these are introductions. They're not meant to be in the course, right? Like in in the course. No, they're they're always in the course to start the to start that act to start that module. So if you want a synopsis of what you're gonna oh. go through and and because they can take it non-linearly. So they're like, oh, what is this module about? I'm gonna just devote three or four weeks to learning this. I want to see what it's about. And they jump into this intrigo and they watch it and they see the visuals, they hear the arguments, they go, oh, that's what I'm going to work on this week. I'm going to work on this module or this act. So the intrigo is to is a video that intrigues them and introduces them to what is contained within that module. Does that make sense? All right. Yes. Would you still then eliminate the academic um, parts of it? This is this is this is interesting, but it's not intriguing necessarily to someone who wants to learn sustainable lab design, uh, right? Sustainable design. I don't. This is sustainable design in general. Like this is great, and I would put it in. This is this is too much. This is a wall of text that has nothing to do in an ad. Like imagine if, if imagine if a movie trailer came at you with like ah, but three you, paragraphs. But, but don't think of it as a movie trailer because it's it is an acad- an academic educational piece. When Innovative Ed started illustrating, they took teachers' entire lectures and they tried to bring them to life and make them intriguing. And the teachers were really boring, so they brought these techniques to it. Then I started this idea of creating these little yeah, intriguers. Yeah, because it was otherwise hopelessly boring. Then I said to them, look, I don't need you to illustrate what I'm saying. I can do that myself, and I students can do it because we can do video editing. I said, what I need is I need something that uses your creative team's top talents, like cool animations and jetpacks and, 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 you know, and whole worlds. And, and then we created this because it takes a long time to do them. Rather than a half-hour lecture, I said, let's do these little five to ten minute bits and bring it punchy. The only problem is that they get so diluted that they are just then advertisements and there's no content in the Intrigo unless we put something like this in. So I'm always on the fence about how much actual content. But I see your point. Um, They're pushing for what you're saying too. I just think that then it goes to Inasa's point, which is then it's, what's the difference between this and any other course Intrigo that says, hey, you can think out loud in cool ways. If I was a student to enroll in your classes, I wouldn't take both. Because well, I you would think I would think that there's not much difference. That's well, what, the thing is, 
this is very nice with the with the um developing um the, all, all of this knowledge and stuff and, and the problem is what is this course actually about i thought this was about video editing yeah well this so course is about the actual technology here? you're right and nas is right so this theoretical stuff really belongs in the other course or it belongs in some document that connects the two courses i hear both your points so it needs to stick more toward this is, this the is technical. Like, this is like, uh, ideological and political and everyone, this is good, yeah. but this is not the point of the court. Okay. Of okay, and you're right. All right, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take that yeah. out. There is a lot of this. But like, okay. And I would also cut out like at least two quarters of this. Like it's, it's long, it's a long read as well. Yeah. Uh, also the script, like uh, actually a long listening, but get get to the point where what you do in the course. This is like one of those mobile game ads where they show you something and that's not the game. Uh huh. I see what you're saying. Yes. So actually, actually, actually tell them what they're going to be doing. Okay. I'm listening like, to like, both of you. Put, 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 Actually, actually put put like a small sample like in between the scenes and put a small sample video of like some you doing something in Blender or something like that. Well, the, the, reason, the, the reason the reason I'm not doing that the reason I'm not doing that though is because I don't that goes into our tutorials. I don't want to use production time from them to show what I can show on the screen from Blender. It's really putting me in the worlds. Like that, what you're getting to now Fair with me. Then, then, then let yourself get pasted into Blender through a green screen and walk around in like the Blender plane. Okay. Like, watch. Well, like here, I'm going to do here, like, right. To touch and stuff, build and stuff. Make a timeline by lifting the timeline blocks with your hands or something. Like, show what you'll be doing, but like in an over-the-top way if you want that. Right, if which is exactly what design. exactly what you're going to see here. Because I don't use Blender right, in this, this, in this, this thing. This is right. This is okay. right. All right, this is very important. Then continue there, and then I'll uh, I'll go back and revisit that and, and repurpose it. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Once we learn to become media producers ourselves, the power of those amped up narratives diminishes. The compelling music and those authoritative voices, they are all mere waveforms, easy to manipulate and no longer able to pull you under or drown you in this telling spectacle. Left or right, we are all responding to the same very old, depressing and debilitating stories of human greed and dependency, anger and dissatisfaction. And the dissolution of our once inspiring American and international dreams. In this class, we learn to create our own stories, uplifting stories, where we are talking about sustainability. And in this act of our passion play, you will find of that adding your own music. Whether or not you ever thought of training to be a musician is almost as easy. The waveforms turn into meaty notes that Kalei is running. Yeah, from the most scanner. Um, jumping uh, is uh, maybe notes that Kohen is jump, running, jumping, and dancing through as though playing Super Mario Brothers, holding a herald and the purple crayon stylus, which uh, with which he is literally drawing the notes in front of him as he runs. As he steps on the midi notes, they light up and make sounds. <laughs> As playing a video game, today anyone can make a sound soundtrack with a symphonic sound of a full orchestra on a laptop. Most of the game and game stories, though, unarguably exciting, have gotten the real majority of us in the The trigger us and cause what psychologists call amygdala hijacking. As Calhane runs, monsters appear, and then he has to jump over and dodge. In a video game or a fiction movie, it can be fun, but when these tactics are used to tell the news, it can paralyze us. You are moving or moving toward. Is that because these drugs get eyeballs and because they do seem to sustain profits for key industries? Cohen starts to jump on the monsters like Mario to make them shrink and disappear. Propagators of these myths. These monsters, people engaged in willful or, or inadvertent propaganda, are well funded and able to hire top talent to use top tier technology to saturate their stores with carefully crafted music videos and emotionally invested. With every show stopping propaganda technique, this book goes to all the CGI bells and whistles are the most advanced and dramatic cinematography of the world money can buy. Ideas from psychology, sociology, and anthropology create culture tales that almost no one can use. Well, so he holds up the shield and banishes the monster with his purple crayon. The bread and circles, as the Roman Empire would say, are funded to divide and conquer. How can the silent majority compete? How do the few of us who actually have tangible solutions to everything from the food, energy, water mixes, and a zero waste, smoke, economy, to the rest of climate change, get all messages out there? 
Well, today, the means of production, technologies for multimedia production, have fallen in price and have fallen into the hands of the masses. And so that's what we're about. Uh, we're about in this class. There's, here's what we are going to do: the sustainability and training. By the way, uh, what? <laughs> Same thing as above, Dad. Same thing as above. Okay, but that's this part as well. Wow, but that's part of the whole appeal this of this. This is good, but this, but is, but is this? Yes, maybe the, I would leave this in. But this, this is good with CGI. But this is this is not teaching them anything. This is just basically it's a it's a good ramp, and it definitely mm -hmm. belongs in some court. Mm -hmm. But if this is about hey uh, game design or anything or uh, video design, Blender or whatever. I, I, this does not belong here. Neither does okay. this. Okay. Or this does actually, but you have to, you have to, you have to connect this to yeah. whatever's happening in your course. Okay. Okay. Um, instead of using these means to divide and conquer, we are going to use our media skills to multiply and liberate. Elaine throws flowers and fruits out into the game, as in Pikmin Bloom. playing as the 2D side pole game format with a media landscape camera as he runs. He's picking up music from the flower pebbles, takes the phone by on the left, right. He needs you. It's a content from the several sources in the sustainability literature and with the assistance of chat GPT or any equivalently intelligent AI and AI and HI person who work together in group Teams. Create scripts for a series of media pieces that will employ different technologies to get your most salient points across most people who see this like the audience. Okay. In scene two, you will narrate your scripts using a combination of live voices and curated AI voices, employing effective voice over and acting techniques, and creating audio pieces ready for production. The music changes into something more hopeful, wistful, becoming symphonic. Make emotional recharge music. The text turns into a musical score and the waveforms turn into images of an orchestra playing. In scene three, three, yes, even you will create compelling music with backgrounds using royalty free music rooms and computer based systems to give your narrations more emotional punch. It doesn't matter if you have previous musical experience or not, but then you can use to literally allow you to cut and paste audio waveforms together and to literally draw music from from any instrument on the screen and then play them. Four, you will try your head at using blended music pants for Arcus in uh, story maps and comic maps or any combination of technology. Now in story editing this time, a video that uses live action stock footage that image to illustrate the audio you've created. In this way, in this scene, in these scenes, we have to set the stage for your smart feeling, power to compete with his story, the story of the past and presently rich and powerful. To make your story as compelling as you uh, as you theirs. That's theirs. messed up. It's um, theirs. Mm -hmm. Or at least as compelling as you can, so that eventually our our story, the story of the people and of our common future of sustainability, Delane's hold the co holds a copy of the famous Bruntland report up to the camera, becomes our common history. So um I'm gonna keep going. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm gonna do two hours today, but okay. um I cannot read anymore at the moment. <laughs> do you want me um, then to read it? And my then you... about to collapse. Why don't then I, you, you, you show you it on screen, it, I'll read it. And I'll just listen, I, or I can yeah. read silently. No, it, it's, it's better. Just it's, watch your screen. Yeah, it's really helpful. No, you, you, you put it on screen and let me read it, uh, because otherwise it'll disrupt the recording that I'm doing. So I'll do the reading. You oh, tell me how it sounds and tell me when we should stop uh, to pause to make a comment. That's really helpful to me, though. Thank you. So I'll, I'll, I'll figure out, I'll try to figure out a way to take those edits into consideration. All right. Here we go. Okay, you start speaking. Okay. Intrigo 3. Capture the world to make a better world. The art of digital twinning and green architectural planning. We see Colhane pull up silently to the U.S. Innovative Education TV studio in his new Chevy Bolt EUV. He rolls down the window and speaks to the camera. This is my new car, a fully electric car, the first new car I've bought in my life. It's a Chevy Bold EUV that I charge on sunshine at the Rosebud Continuum Echo Science Center, where you, our students of sustainability, come every semester to work on walking the walk in our field-centered dew tank. 
You'll notice that unlike even the hybrid I was driving for the past decade, this car is completely clean and quiet. It has all sorts of smart safety features. It gets over 250 miles to the charge, and perhaps the best thing about it is that it will actually be outdated in only a year or two replaced on the market by vehicles that are ever more safe and sustainable and socially and environmentally responsible. And why? Because students like you with the skills you're gaining in this program and this class are now the folks designing the cars, building the cars, promoting and marketing and selling these pollution-free vehicles, and educating the public about their overwhelming advantages, making what seemed unreal only a decade ago, a decade or two ago, now seem inevitable. In this module, we want to bring you into the world of the Unreal Made Real, doing sustainable design through the magic of several very powerful programs that the pros now use to design improved cars like this, and better buildings and landscapes like this. Um, tools that you, can to, that you can, too, use to make the car or home or city of your dreams. Don't we all want to get out of this dystopian, unsustainable nightmare matrix we feel trapped in? Let me show you how we can. Take the red pill, Neo. Culhane puts an oculus on his head and pops a gummy candy into his mouth and all of a sudden starts growing like Alice in Wonderland caught in the house, destroying the, distorting the car until he blip, 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 just squeezes his way out of it, popping out like a genie towering over the car by the building. I, couldn't, I used uh, stable diffusion to make these images and it didn't come up with what I wanted, so I don't have the right images, but the guy, that's just me using AI to try to get my images. Anyway, it gives you the sort of the idea. So this is all computer generated. For instance, let's say I want to make changes to my car. Using programs like Unreal Engine and Blender 3D and Unity 3D and Gravity Sketch, this is now trivial. And the thing is, we can now seamlessly collaborate together, creating new products and building better buildings in real time, no matter where we are in the world. Culhane and a team of students in lab coats with Oculus headsets on start working on his car, reshaping it. <laughs> Obviously, we can change the color and design, the shape and characteristics of the body of the vehicle, stretching and squashing and re-sketching. Sorry, press the wrong huh? button. Um, I want to say something. Yeah. Um, so this is all good. Get to the point. Where, where, where's the... Here, this is, this is, this is great. This is great. Mm -hmm. This is a nice demonstration, but after this, you have to give them something. Otherwise, it's just like a an article uh, about sustainability, but this isn't a class. It doesn't feel like a class they're about to take. It just feels like something they're reading. Well, they're watching. They're not reading it. Well, so whatever, but they're listening to your speech, which is all of this. And Well, um, because I'm doing it as I say it, so... I pop out of the car and yes. then I start to change the color, I start to change the shape. What, what, what is this part, what is the part of this about? What, what this is, this about? is about, what is this part about? This is about using um, Unreal Engine and Gravity Sketch to design new cars, to design new buildings, to design new cities. So I'm trying to show that this is the technology we'll be covering this. This is good? So I was just trying with the pictures are just trying to give an idea of what we're going to see, but that is wait, 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 my mic is not working. You could piece it out, maybe? Piece it out, what do you mean? But I, I don't know, I think you could put some gaps in like this. Okay. Um, Go ahead, you can put those gaps in. Make it a little bit shorter, make mm -hmm. it a teeny tiny bit shorter. You should just break, break it up. Like, like, Especially um, this this part here is okay. um, very very important. Actually, this part um, and also this. But, um, yeah, just continue. Okay. Um. Obviously, we can change the color and design, the shape and characteristics of the body of the vehicle, stretching and squashing and re-sketching. Culhane clicks on his hand controller and shrinks himself down to the size of an action figure and jumps in the open hood. But we can also be like Ant-Man, switching back and forth from being giants outside the vehicle to being tiny homunculi inside, working on redesigning the chassis, the powertrain, the battery system. So I'll be inside the car, like, doing all these, these maneuvers as a tiny Ant-Man figure. And then... Uh, Go down. Oh, cool. 
I need to look at that. The camera, the camera zooms out, and we see that Culhane and his collaborators aren't just building a car, but an entire landscape. Some giants working on buildings, others small like elves working on gardens and trees. When we have a design we like, we are no longer stuck simply looking at it. We can now bring it into a physics engine, what you may call a game engine. Game engines use sophisticated math to make not just models of alternative realities, but to do simulations involving gravity, wind, water flows, particles, and even thermodynamics. With them, you can play God and build not just cars, but entire worlds into which you can then place these fancy new electric vehicles and test them out. Culhane's Chevy Bolt has now been transformed into a flying car, four rotors added to it, with the doors now opening like a cockpit. Culhane climbs inside and flies up to a rooftop garden on the top of the Innovative Ed building, looking down over the campus. My master's and PhD are in urban planning with concentrations in regional international development, environmental analysis and policy, and with a focus on urban ecology, and I've been a gamer for decades. So I was one of the first in my class to start playing with SimCity and SimCity societies back in the late 90s. How delighted we were when you could, we see Culhane wave his hand in the controller and make things he's talking about appear around him, when you could add windmills and solar panels and electric cars and buses and trucks to your landscapes. As the century turned and computers got more powerful, we were dreaming of the day when we could create immersive simulations of truly sustainable cities, ostensibly to show to all of our friends, colleagues, and other planners and policymakers to convince them that a better way of building the built environment was not only desirable but possible. Or is it? not only possible, but desirable. Different people seem to have different objections to making the anthropogenic landscape more life-affirming, don't they? But the thought was, if you can build it in a sim, they'll come to build it in reality. So each time a new set of features came out, or a new sim program came out, and each time the simulations became more interactive and more realistic, I would celebrate, thinking we'd edge that much closer to a sustainable reality. I mean, look around you. If we can design the campus to look like this, an Unreal Engine, and get the Student Green Energy Fund to help engineers make it happen in the real world, who wouldn't want to live in this utopia? Disney had teased those of us wealthy enough to vacation in Florida with Epcot, but now all of us could, could role play as citizens of Tomorrowland from the safety of our own homes or schools anytime we wanted. Surely the experience would start translating into reality. It came to a head for me as a teacher when a PCGS student from an impoverished section of Ohio, herself an avid gamer, introduced this class to a new green city. Uh -huh. Hello? Yeah. Hello? Yeah, I hear you. Yes. I, 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 uh, I, I don't know if you're already doing this. Interesting. Um, why is it? Never mind. This thing is... What? What? Okay, my, my thing is doing stuff. I, I accidentally... Pre I pressed on something. Oh, and now the marking is gone. Can you, can you hit um, Control Wait, Z? I can go back. Yeah, hit Control Z. Um, that doesn't do anything. That just puts that here back. Oh. Okay. Um, part of the share function? Shit. Uh, I, can, I can mark it again. That was this. Yeah, but it does. It won't. It won't have her comment. I think she can find her comments by looking at the history. I wouldn't worry about it. Anyway, I, I agree with her that you should take this out. Okay. Like, because this is good. Like, this is a nice sentence. Uh, this is a nice sentence. This is a nice sentence. This is all very nice. Nice paragraph. But it's a uh, filler. Mm. In this case, it, it doesn't contribute. To the over what just happened no um yes that's what i was saying this i find very good i, I like that you're going into the sim city narrative but that's just personal okay um, yeah because i thought that had to come out so maybe, this will be interesting uh, I, I think it's also um yes and um i i don't i don't know how old these teachers are but like depending on your uh demographic yeah, it, it could mean that a lot of people can identify themselves with these games if mm -hmm. they like these type of games. Like, for me, this is, I, I like. The, oh, interesting. Um, or just, yes, did, or I, maybe I would I would generalize, actually. Because this could, this could not go on anyone, but like uh, saying city or world builder games that could, like, like, if you check out Age of Empires or something, you know, just mm -hmm. getting, uh, getting closer to... Um, uh, you want you want to this to reach more people because this is this is strong. This is very strong. Oh wow! And this will get people into it. Okay. 
personal opinion. I'm a little gamer, but um, if you if you can generalize that more into a mm -hmm. genre of games, then um, that would help. Right. Well, what I'd do then is I'd say the new Green Cities mod for Sylines. Um, along with other uh, world building games, but I will keep that in the narrative because what they're going to show behind me are the actual scenes from this Green Cities game. Okay. You know, there are game designs that are such yeah. courses have been mm -hmm. For sure. Yeah. Inas is saying there are courses that teach that she's looking at for sustainable, desi uh, sustainable design, no. uh, but nothing, no, the there's for game, game creation, design. game design, but and nothing for sustainability. Different. So what makes mine different is that it's tied specifically to sustainability. All right, so let me go on. Beyond, beyond Culhane, uh, say Skyline Green City is shown. It seemed to have everything we could want to implement to climb up the UN Sustainable Development Goals Pyramid. Community gardens, women-run enterprises, recycling centers, green roofs, all forms of renewable energy, up to and even including ocean thermal conversion and solar power towers and other blue sky ideas. It blended the practical and the quixotic as Killian says, the Quixotic, and allow the player to work through the three pillars of sustainability, considering the economic, social, and environmental impacts of each decision you made. Where did that come from? Are you building on my Spanish? <laughs> no, um, it's it's. Are you it, building on my Spanish? Americans. I don't Americans say Quixotic, but actually it's Quixotic, because it's Don Quixote. But Americans don't know that, so they say quick Yeah. I don't know either. Um, the social environmental impacts of each decision you made as a world builder in your attempts to build a green city. Yet Nicole admitted she lost interest in the game very quickly. Why, the class asked. It seems like a great way to study sustainability, much more immersive, interactive, and fun Hello? than mere books. Yeah. Hello? Oh. Much more immersive, interactive, and fun than mere books and readings. All true, Nicole admitted, but eventually I felt none of it. Neither no, no, school. No, you, just, you just froze. Oh. Where did I freeze? That. <laughs> everything is coming uh, um, too late. No, no, no. You, you froze like a minute ago. That, okay. That's when that came through. <laughs> okay. Never mind. You just keep, keep reading. Okay. Um, all true, Nicole admitted, but eventually I felt none of it. Neither schooling nor the high-tech games were really helping me to help my family and my neighborhood in Cleveland. I was building simulated utopias, and they had great ideas in them, but I wasn't doing anything for my environment. And that's the key. So I wasn't doing anything for my environment. And that is the key. I told her in the class that I'd always felt the same way and quickly got bored and frustrated with the commercial simulations out there. As an urban planner, I wanted to create plans for real places, for spaces of significance to me. These games really were just that, mere games, no matter how sophisticated or realistic the environments and gameplay. And we sustainabilists don't have time for mere games. Yet we do need to play at in the fields of sustainable development as it relates to our somewhat desperate and certainly disparate goals and visions. Applied gaming technology lets us, at the very low transaction cost, do as citizens exactly what planners and architects do before they embark on a construction project. Create models of proposed realities. What we need, I would suggest, and what we're doing, going to explore together in these scenes are ways to use gaming technologies to play around with and in our own environments, ways to marry geographical information systems and game engines to envision and re-envision our landscapes so that we can experience and interact with a multitude of possibilities so that we can walk through a multiverse of outcomes. This is very personal approach to development. It allows for true democratization of development. We need landscapes of the people, built, modified, or improved by the people for the people. This means finding ways to get maximum citizen engagement, tapping into stakeholders' sincere interests in their land, in their, that is, your homes. This need underscores the perils of worlds of pure imagination. We can be inspired by fantasy and we can take lessons from other peoples and other worlds, but until we try to implement the fruits of our imagination or the realities of others in our own backyards, we founder. We fail to understand the environmental and ecological nuances of unique places, historical and cultural legacies, and contingencies that confound implementation and make a mockery of the one-size-fits-all McDonaldization of our increasingly franchise-saturated world. Culhane and his jetpack now flies up over the landscape. It speaks to the heart of why many of us feel the popular adage, think globally, act locally, is backwards. While it's good to get a bird's eye view of things and understand holistic perspectives, who can truly think globally? 
Emperors and men who would be king have tried to act as if that godlike power is thinkable by mere mortals. But as James Scott emphasized in his classic book, Seeing Like a State, how schemes to improve the human condition have failed, the map is not the territory. All models are gross simplifications and thus distortions. Better in my book to think locally and thereby act globally together when each of us shares what we are doing in our unique locales. In these scenes, we explore how we can take a local landscape that's important to you, a spatial region of significance, and turn the map into a 3D terrain, filling the territory with development possibilities, with 3D objects relevant to sustainability and interactive elements, both informative and empowering. We focus on the use of either open source programs or programs free to those earning under $100,000 per year from the use of the programs Oh, from 100,000 for the use of the programs. This includes Unity 3D and Unreal Engine. And this is in keeping with the UN Sustainable Development Goal number four, ensure inclusive and equitable quality education and promote lifelong learning opportunities for all. While it is true that as a student at USF, your tuition covers the use of the very expensive programs like ArcGIS and Adobe Creative Suite, most of these programs are no longer available to you for free once you graduate. It appears to us self-evident that we cannot promote lifelong learning opportunities for all if you don't come from wealth and privilege and your learning experience comes to an end a mere couple of years after you start on your creative software journey. These programs take many, many years to master and the field is always changing. As sustainabilitists, we don't want to look you, lock you into certain packages and their financial obligations or constrain your ability to grow with the field. Thus, we focus our tutorials on the powerful programs available free of charge into perpetuity. Once you've mastered them, you will find your skills will transfer to the expensive software packages that many professional organizations you may find work in could ask you to use. This world I'm flying over, this digital twin of our beloved US, USF campus, was created in Unreal Engine and is used here in the USF studios as a way of controlling weather and lighting and noise whenever we want to shoot a local on-campus video but find the external conditions uncomfortable. Still, the fact that everything you see around me is in fact a real locale with practical and emotional significance to all of us bulls makes a world of difference. That touch of the familiar lends the all-important impact lending verisimilitude to the work. By tying the virtual to the real, we get what is called an augmented reality that has a certain je ne sais quoi a kind of donde esta el baño that provides its own answer. As Paul McCartney sings in the film score to Vanilla Sky, this is your life, this is your time, you've got it all, don't blow it. Okay, so I'm just gonna get my, uh, I have noodles, and I'm just gonna get some sauce with those, and uh, then we can do the rest. Okay. This is good. The problem is... <laughs> it's long and hard to... Um... Where does this relate? Where does this relate? Where does this relate? Relate to the students more, more, more. This is this is nice, but they're not here to only read. They want to do something themselves. They want to, as I would say, for create. <laughs> they want to, they want to co-create. They want to do something. You need to in the uh, oh, what did I do? In the intrigo alone, there should already be some type of. Um, some type of job, some type of mission, some type of, uh, ant what is an entry? Driver? A drive. Like, something, something that drives them. So you mean that, like, when I'm talking about this, I should be in Unreal Engine placing assets? Or I should be on the land? I mean, no, no, yeah, is it... Shorten it and, like, shorten this by, like, half... And then fill in a little of um, fill in questions, or no, no, not questions, but fill in fill in things directed directly at the students, t telling them what they will be doing and stuff. Like really straightforward, you will be, but like in inside these texts, uh, inside okay. these texts, uh, center them, center them around the goal uh, mm -hmm. of um, every couple sentences have like. And end like every every paragraph with like, and that is what you will or something. You know, just 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 empower uh, them, make them uh, feel heard, and make them feel. Um, I had that word just like ten minutes ago, and uh, I forgot it. Was that the answer? Uh, no, no hablo inglés. No, no hablo inglés. Um, 
So you're saying, um, I, I, you get, you get it though, right? Yeah, I think I do. The Include thing, them. make them feel included. Make them feel included. Okay, and the, the thing is, if I go too specific, they've cautioned me that the 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 intrigos are supposed to last for a long time. The tutorials I can update as new software and new techniques become available. So I'll, that's my job every year to update the tutorials. The Intrigos, we're only going to do this once in their then fancy um, studio. Then it's even better to generalize this. Right. Then well, generalize this. The, the history, when I, when, I talk about, when I talk about this young black girl named Nicole from Cleveland, from the inner city, she was talking about Green City Skyline. So even if that program disappears, that's part of the Daddy. history. So that's okay. okay. But, but like, like show that for me. Right. And switch over, like, put, put something in that not only refers to City Skylines or Sim City, also right. uh, uh, somewhere up here, um, but also refer to, refer to any and all city builders. So more people feel heard yes. and uh, uh, feel referred to. Right. Yes. Well, that's that's good. Uh, okay. Good. I'll switch them. Okay. Yes. No, I was gonna say. So I'm, I don't really even want to say Unreal or Blender in in the tutorials or say programs like. The point is the open source nature, open source. Yes. And that these tools exist okay. for free. I'm just okay. Go get some stuff for okay. This is great. We're really making progress. He's terrific. And us. He's um. He's really good. He thinks so clearly. His his uh. The way his mind works. He's a great beta tester and editor. I wish you well. You'll be able to hear him if you watch some of what he we recorded. Who's um? We're using OBS Studio. We're live broadcasting right now. But this is tremendous. I wonder if we look at the Chevy Bolt thing now, it should say that it's completely um, charged. You don't have to because it automatically shuts off when it's uncharging. Okay. It says completed. Okay. That's pretty cool, huh? And we get 250 more, four miles. Wants to watch Octonauts. Why won't you unplug it? Hmm? Why won't you go unplug it? Unplug. Because I'm still working with him. He's just going to get something. He's right. He's back. I am back. He may be. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. All right. Three to go. So you want me to read him? Yes, please. My voice is not recovered. Okay. Maybe as you eat, it'll help recover it. All right, Intrigo 4, going from 2D to 3D, from screen making to world building. Students are encouraged to watch this claymation adaptation of Plato's Cave before watching this Intrigo. That'll just be in the um, in Canvas uh, as people come into the course. But if you've never seen that, you might want to click take a look at it at some point. Um, it's, it's actually very short. Maybe you should watch it. It's, it's really creative and short. Just click on it and... I think you'll you'll get a kick out of it. It's be great for your education. I'm not hearing the audio though. Are you hearing it? Oh, my mic was off. I I know this one. I've seen it. Okay, you've seen it. All right, good. Then we can start with that. That's what forms the basis of this one. Yes, I've seen. Okay, so now you know what it is. Okay, so we see Culhane chained in the middle of a virtual music creation program in Plato's cave. 
a cave populated with mushrooms and stalactites filled with ancient artifacts and treasures. He's nonetheless composing music on strange virtual instruments. He's recreating the riff to the song, Everybody Wants to Change the World. He turns to the camera. I assume you're all familiar with Plato's cave. That's what we've been crea that's what we've created our own version of here. And I'm hoping you all know the song Everybody Wants to Rule the World. It came out when I was in high school and was recently featured in the dystopian Hunger Games. It starts with these unforgettable lyrics. In the background we hear the classic arpeggio from the song and the on-screen uh, on and on screens in various caves behind Culhane we see video imagery. Welcome to your life. Culhane gestures to news footage of hurricanes and floods. There's no turning back. That could describe your decision to become a master of sustainability, right? Here you are at USF at PCGS in this course, but still stuck in Plato's cave. What you learn in school are still mere shadows on the wall, flat representations of the richness and complexity of the real world. And then it says, acting on your best behavior. Oops, and then you gotta scroll down. <clears throat> acting on your best behavior, turn your back on mother nature. Everybody wants to rule the world. It acknowledges that in the cave of theory and abstractions, your back really is turned on reality, on nature and the nature of reality. And then there are all these competing interests that you may feel powerless to participate in that unfairly determine the final outcomes. We all have what we think are our own visions of a better world, but since none of us can see the whole world and few of us share what we do see, how do we know what the collective result could or should be? A tragedy of the commons, perhaps? A comedy of errors in judgment? Of course, in democratic societies, we believe that the key to acting on our best behavior and not turning our back on Mother Nature and avoiding that tragedy is to bring as many voices and as many visions of the world into the conversation. The song points okay. to this... Wait, yeah. wait, wait. wait. <laughs> this is good. Again, this is good writing. Mm -hmm. just doesn't belong here. Because <laughs> it's from screen making to world building. You, you ought to get to the point quickly, I feel. And... um. But I'm setting up the context of it with the song. Yes, that that is nice. But setting up the context, uh, context. Where do we? Where does it start here? With like three paragraphs, four actually. I, I don't know. I don't know what, what your students are like, or what what your uh, whole uh, method is like. But oh. I, I also haven't, I, I don't know how the intrigues will be in um, video form. Like, for instance, uh, speak, uh, the, the speed at which you speak, the speed, yes, that is right. And, um, and what, if you um, hold um, attention by uh, switching, um, by gesturing and uh, switching right. tone, uh, tones and... Uh, Voices. I, 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 no, I believe this. Um, and uh, background imagery. But, it still feels kind of long, especially these, again, and like, <laughs> this again also. Oh yeah, all right, so you're right. I may I may cut a lot of that out and I'll cut parts of the song out because uh, we probably don't need all of it for sure. Yeah, this song, is, this song is nice, this song is nice. That was would be the thing I'd actually leave, but this, again, nicely philosophical, but how does it relate to this? Um, because we are talking about the consequences of not building our own worlds. I mean, remember that this is for sustainabilitists. It's not for, it's not for game designers who are going to do work for hire and they just need to learn the skill set and then they do what their boss tells them. This is for people who didn't come here with any interest in learning video production or game design, yet they're, they're beginning to be convinced that they should invest their time learning these very time-intensive skills so that they can get their point across. So a lot of this intrigo is propaganda mm -hmm. saying you should spend the time doing this and here's why. Because that otherwise they could just they could just watch Andrew Price's Blender Guru videos or go to Unity uh, tutorial uh, thread and they could just learn like I'm learning. If you want to do this in, relate to the students directly. Like actually, actually, like 
do you have anything like what will you do about it or something or um what we will be discussing in this course like it, it, this is nice but it has to be clear that this is also in the course they okay. actually just say that okay and then you can hit your paragraphs down there okay see if it if it i mean you're right and i'll probably take out that next paragraph let me read it to you and then let's see how it yeah, uh pretty. okay um the song points to the solution huh where are we the song points to the solution we're welcoming the so the, the song points to the solution we're welcoming you to in this course it's my own design it's my own remorse help me to decide help me make the most of freedom and of pleasure nothing ever lasts forever everybody wants to rule the world the song expresses the frustration i'm sure many of you were feeling when you joined our sustainability program i can't stand this indecision married with a lack of vision that sums it up doesn't it even stuck in the cave, we can help each other through education to tackle societal and personal indecision. We are armed with the scientific method and the emergent truths that result from a maiotic dialectic. Now, I went to hear Pulitzer Prize winning scientist René Dubose speak at St. John the Divine Church in New York City when I was in high school. This was the late 70s. They were showing us their new urban agriculture program with rooftop gardens on the church using lightweight recycled styrofoam. Dr. Dubose wrote in his book, So Human and Animal, and told us personally, quote, Creating a desirable future demands more than foresight. It requires vision. At the same time, Buckminster Fuller, the futurist, had met with my father for an interview and told him what he was writing in his book Critical Path in the chapter From Weaponry to Livingry about our path to a better future. He said, we now have the technology and know-how for all of humanity to live better than all the kings and emperors in history. All of humanity. That was known in the 1970s. And yet here we are, living in a world that is getting closer and closer to resembling the Hunger Games. So to the final lyric of the song, so glad we've almost made it, so sad they had to fade it, right? We're so close. We actually have ways to marry our visions to make the needed decisions. So in this act, we want to create new visions of the world so everybody seems to want to rule and show those visions, share our visions in a more compelling way than mere 2D renderings on a flat screen. Because even if we use Blender and Unity and Unreal Engine and Gravity Sketch to make compelling 3D visualizations of our visions for a better tomorrow, we're still thinking merely out loud rather than out loudest. Are you still there? So here, here's the key in that paragraph. I'm saying, so in this act, we want to create new visions of the world everybody seems to want to rule and show those visions, share our visions in a more compelling way than mere 2D renderings on a flat screen. Because even if we use Blender and Unity and Unreal Engine and Gravity Sketch to make compelling... I, I like, like all of this. I like mm -hmm. all of this. Like, from like up here to... Um, oh, actually all the way down here, basically. Um, this is where it gets good and where you're doing what is right, I think. Because this, this time, this, so in this act, we, we, okay, I see we, what you're saying. On we, the students, and you, right. want, to create, want to create that gives the power to them. Okay. So when I say, um, we, creative artists and scientists, and this is the point of this whole thing, Killian, so tell me if it comes across. Colhain gestures to the screens in the cave as he spins around his creation tools. We, creative artists and scientists, get to play around in VR fields of multidimensional creation, but our audiences, like those of you viewing this now, must still watch us from behind a screen. Whether stuck in a classroom or in a cinema or on your home computer screens, the people we're trying to convince are still forced to be passive spectators, and that isn't fair to you or them. It robs the viewer of agency. Today's technology makes it possible right. for all of us to literally walk, run, jump, and fly through alternate metaverse versions of the worlds we know, worlds of our own creation. And so in this act, we're going to put them into VR, AR formats that people can truly interact with. Some of the new techniques we're going to use for world building in this act are called photogrammetry and mesh modeling, texturing, animating, and scripting, all put in the service of a 3D spatial experience. Culhain pulls his chains and walks over to a pile of ancient artifacts and grabs something that looks like the gold idol Indiana Jones was trying to escape with from the cave in Mesoamerica. 
Most of the heavy lifting is done with that is now done with AI, so you can get started with your own cell phone camera. And he starts taking pictures. We can now use our personal communication devices to take any natural object or archaeological artifact and digitize it through photogrammetry and send a completely faithful simulation of it via the internet anywhere in the world to be 3D printed and studied or placed in a virtual museum or a recreation of the time period and context it occurred in. Indiana Jones would have killed for that. He walks as far as his chains can take him, scanning the walls and ceiling with his phone. We can now scan this cave or the prison caves of our own homes and work environments from inside and build it out and do a walkthrough even when we can't walk far. He then unfolds a drone and sends it on its way through passages he can't get to. On the screens in the cave, we see what the drone sees in both sonar and lidar. Without even leaving the cave, we can also remotely fly a low-cost drone through passages too narrow and accessible for human beings and fly out and up and over the entire forest temple outside the cave. With drone photogrammetry, we can capture the entire landscape inside and out, and we can do so in wavelengths of light and sound we humans can't see. We have three main computer-based tools for doing this available at no cost to you, even after you graduate. We have QGIS and Blender, Unity, and 3 Real Engine, Unreal Engine, and we even have a VR-based tool, Gravity Sketch, a tool which lets you collaboratively design in real time with others, literally putting you in the world you're co-creating as a giant Gulliver or a Lilliputian, changing scale and working inside and outside the cave and the model. It's a brave new frontier. We can use these tools to put the whole thing... Huh? Oh, we can use these tools to put the whole thing together on our laptops or tablets and see how everything fits together. And then we can put on our VR headsets and actually move through the cave and heck, maybe even figure out a way to get out. This is how spatial VR technology can also help us get out of the metaphorical cave of unsustainability we currently feel trapped in. So in this act, we're gonna take those 2D visions and then flesh them out from screen making to world building. The thought process is a little different adding dimensions of sight and sound so that we are in an immersive, interactive, 360-degree surround sight and surround envi sound environment. But once you get the hang of it, there is no turning your back. It should be your back. But so turning. I like this. Yeah? I, I, I like this. Um, you can visualize it, right? And I, I like the emphasis on we. I like the emphasis on... Um, sorry. Um... I like the emphasis on doing this whole thing together uh, on um, giving them examples on the philosophy and uh, the, the philosophical parts of it that, um, yeah, here, this one, for instance. Um, okay, and, um, so it ties this, it together? Especially the last part, that it, you, you get the philosophy across while, it's, uh, while also um, sounding appealing to the viewer and making them feel like they're a part of what you're doing. Or okay. actually, a part of what they're what they're doing. So this would make you interested in this aspect of the course. I like, I like this. The, the beginning can be shortened, but yeah. this this just gets better and better. Yes. So should I take out Rene Dubot uh, and my experience in the rooftop garden? Yes, because it's nice. <laughs> but that's not. I don't know if this is what the people come to the course for. If they like reading that, I think it's personal preference, but. I, I would not. I, that would that would belong. Uh, well, the, in, um, the course designer Alexandra. This is about roof design, right? Yeah. So the course design. Alexandra said that what we can do with these sections that are wordy is where we put the intrigo for them to click on and watch. We can put this text, so I can write it so that it's the the hintergrund for watching the intrigo. And then they can read that it or not. That is a good idea. That's what I would do with most of the metaphorical stuff, I think. Okay. And a philosophical, yes. So then the course design lends it to, you click on the page, you see this uh, philosophical introduction, and then you click on the Intrigo, you watch it. You'll have the script of the Intrigo available if you need it. But that's not, that's a sort of click and download yeah. thing. And then it goes into what your deliverables are. Well, then the tutorial, the, mm -hmm. the three or four <laughs> tutorials and the deliverables. Okay, I can do that. They'll they'll be happy with that too. I just you know I always give give them too much. I give people too much, and then we it's easier to cut down and move stuff than it is to create from nothing. Definitely yes. Um, and I, I I enjoy the fact that okay. you you can share with me because you can see my thought process and I can see your thought process. 
it's a way to how do we get that background there i'll read this one if that's okay okay i can read the last one okay my voice is recovered after I oh wait we miss we're missing one aren't we this is number five and then i have number six right here what was number four what was, what was number five right number four yeah, we just did, no, you did number two, uh, I did numbers one and two, you did three and four, and now I'm doing five. Okay. So three was uh, green cities and stuff, four was the Hunger Games um, oh, yeah. metaphor, and uh, these were the first ones I read. Okay. Thanks. Oh, yeah. Intrigo 5, see through the eyes of the other, being another being, experiencing life as an avatar and finding your place in the world. Kilhane is now part human, part machine, flying in his hover car over a city reminiscent of Maz Eisen and Star Wars, filled with robots and strange creatures. Did you ever dream of being another kind of being? Who or what would that would you be? He gets stopped by stormtroopers and waves his hand saying, You don't need to see my identification, I'm not the droid you're looking for. Do androids dream of electric sheep? If you could look uh, if you could look at and experience the world through the eyes of another person, perhaps of another gender or culture, or through the eyes of another animal or another life form or an android, how might it affect your perceptions of possible sustainability? The environment around Kohane changes to a water landscape and he now appears blue, like the creatures in Avatar. Dr around him, dolphins and mermaids are cavorting. Cavorting? Cavorting. What does that even mean? Give me the dictionary. Cavort means to jump around uh, playfully. Okay, thank you. Um, most of us as children engage in some kind of fantasy role play, and many of us who are the, in the theater of uh, in the theater arts have had the privilege of. Is different from our experience in inhabiting or as Ariel sings in the Little Mermaid, being part of that world. <laughs> That's exactly what I want to do. <laughs> Very nice. Today we all have the chance to reshape ourselves and our perspectives through the magic of avatars and in the world of gamers it is not uncommon for people to regularly change their skin and confront the world as something other. In this act you have the chance to flirt with an avatar of your creation and you will see that with each passing year the possibilities grow toward the yeah, ever greater verisimilitude. And I just read this as a website domain. I, I imagined a dot there, so I thought that would be a <laughs> Because <laughs> I, I live in Germany, so I see this on a daily basis. Uh-huh. Uh, um, morphs into a sea turtle. He looks at his flippers and then at his reflections at the uh, ref refrigerator. And then it is a reflection at the sea surface above him and says, Whoa, gnarly, dude. You know, recently, a game was released to the pub public called Project... Project Shell, in which you become a sea turtle and find out how difficult it is to make it back to the beach where you were born to hatch your own bird, baby turtles. For surviving climate changes and extinction events for 110 million years, sea turtles are now critically endangered here in Florida, and unsustainable coastal development is at the heart of the problem. Our goal in this act is very nice, by the way. Um, by the way, up to this point, I, I like this. I like this. This is completely fine in my, okay. uh, in my eyes. Okay. Um, uh, our goal in this act is to learn some of the avatar creation skills that are out there and apply them to the important Florida Wildlife Corridor project which seeks to protect our unique biodiversity and save us from the human again. Avatars are all over the news. It isn't just the international huge box office success of the Avatar films by James Cameron, which themselves are fascinating discussion pieces for classes on sustainability or the popularity of video games, which introduced this ancient Sanskrit concept to the masses by giving us all the ability to be gods personified as digital incarnations. Avatar, Merriam-Webster reminds us, derives from a Sanskrit word meaning, word meaning descent. And when it first appeared, first appeared in English in the late 18th century and referred to the descent of a deity to the earth, typically the incarnation in earthly form of Vishnu or another Hindu deity. Nor is it just because Microsoft Teams and so many social media sites gives the ability to appear to, to one another as anything we like through avatars. Confounding possible stigmas associated with age, gender, race, or even species, right? <laughs> giving us all the freedom to be how we feel. Oh, yeah, some... That reminds me, that reminds yeah. me. The, the, the one with the, the, I like, I just... 
uh, species reminds me of that of that interview with Mark Zuckerberg. Like, like, oh yeah, like, like, yeah. And Oculus lets you be human. Like I was human. I I mean I am human. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Giving us all the freedom to be how we feel. Getting itself is powerful mode of improving our sustainability goals of equity. Think of how many women in the past have used male pen names to get their ideas listened to and keep in mind that environmental justice and injustice based on bigotry lie at the heart of our unsustainable practices. And then turns it to a Today we are all in the position. This is it. Today we are all in the position to play God. Wait, 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 wait. Can you do that? Or is yeah, that offensive? Yeah. I don't know. We'll see. Okay. They, may, they might shut me down. Today okay. we are all in the position. Otherwise, you're just lying with your head. Today we are all in the position to play God or play in the fields of the Lord as well. Create us and what to do for us. Going from idea to iteration, when we have decided that we engage, we're building and then we have a creation to share. We play whether we want to be life defending Superman or women or whether we want to become the best priest or a life in the world. As open high now, then we arrive from prayer from the alchemy from the spirit and mind that the form is put now as we have to be for the public consciousness for the future of the public and open high now is from the Bhagavad Gita 700 years from the script of the dates back to the first millennium we see. The narrative is a conversation between the yes, Prince Arjuna and Krishna, the avatar of the dear to Krishna. Yeah, so our current avatar of Kaddish is one sec, one sec, one sec. Hold on, I have a speaker. You need to make that louder. Oh, can give him the um, those headphones. I don't know where the uh, the cord is, or maybe the cord is right. Those, give those headphones with the cord. The ones right there, the black ones. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. So our current avatar fetishes really does connect with ancient belief systems and their recirculation in the public in the public consciousness. The question is, what are we as a scientist going to do with this, with this moment in history to make things better so that we become life, the creator of worlds? We just actually are, are exploring life as the other and putting ourselves in the shoes or hooves or paws of the other 90%. There are several tools we will consider for avatar building. and they are growing in number, power, and flexibility. We have gone through the age of the avatar. If you have ever done acting or engaging in Yeah, what I want to... So there's two key points. There's, there's two key points in here. One, I, I want to get the quote from Oppenheimer in there, and I want people to connect it to the Avatar, because that's where it comes from. The other is, I want people to know that yes. it's I, I, I ancient. I would leave the Hindu stuff in it. Right. All of this, this should be cut. Yeah. Except for, like, this is interesting up to here. Um... But um, I, I I like this all in all, and I especially like the uh, the bear um, oh. and the panther because it, it it gets the connection to the floor of the wildlife corridor. It's, I find it very impactful. So going from the impactful. going from the tur from uh, the turtle. From the turtle to the and bear. That, and I also like that you end it with um, talking to the student. Okay. Yeah, this one, it's like when Dino De Laurentiis... I, was, 
Dino De Laurentiis was interviewed when he was making King Kong, and he said, I want to make the people feel something. When Jaws die, nobody cry. When King Kong die, everybody gonna cry. Everybody gonna cry. So I want this to be the moment when people get a gulp in their throat, like these bears and panthers are being killed on a daily basis, or bi-weekly basis. Anyway, yeah. So, and, and that's what I'm presenting. May you read? Yeah, sure. Yes, you may read. I may read. Or I will make. Um, okay. No, I'm really Intrigo 6, tell your story to the world. Culhane is in a white lab coat with safety goggles and a clipboard standing outside a vault leading into a part of a high-tech lab in the cave. The lab coat is embroidered with the words Q sector. Reading your statements of purpose each semester as we work on admissions, it's clear that we are all here to become masters of sustainability whose mission is to help with great urgency save the world, or at least help us make a better world. As sustainabilists, defining what that may look like in clear language and visuals with the hope of affecting both policy and individual behavior demands that we apply every communication skill we can muster and master to telling our story to the world. The massive vault door slides open and music reminiscent of Live and Let Die starts playing. This course is an intensive boot camp, utilizing all the latest technologies, kind of like working with Q-Branch in the James Bond movies. It's a training that provides the opportunity to dig down into many of the latest communication technologies available in this ever-changing world in which we live in, so that we can create a live and let live world. A sign in the room says, Envisioning Sustainability Design Laboratory. As Culhane walks into the lab, we see students in motion capture suits surrounded by technicians in lab coats, trying out fancy cameras, working in front of the green screen, hanging on wires, shooting lasers, like a scene from a 007 movie. Culhane walks around inspecting as he talks. A digital James Bond walks up to Culhane and says in an AI-generated Sean Connery voice, In the movies, we acted as though to stop the bad guys, we had to use violence. But now we know, as Martin Luther King said, it's either non-violence or non-existence. So now we have to apply sustainability concepts and principles to save the world, don't we? Absolutely. Now pay attention, 007. You can't solve species extinction and habitat loss or global warming with a gun. As you're discovering, developing and harnessing your creativity is hard work. Media professionals trained for many, many years to master the digital creative arts and skills now demanded for storytelling in multimedia platforms, and most sustainability professionals never get the chance to become able producers of the kind of content we need to change opinion, policy, and action. Culhane steps into his flying car, which takes off, and the scene dissolves to him landing at the Rosebud Continuum. Next, we see students at work in the garden and greenhouse at Rosebud, with some filming each other. Well, meanwhile, media professionals, by and large, don't get the kind of training in sustainability to be able to counter the disinformation and propaganda that has dangerously delayed the implementation and realization of our entirely reasonable UN Sustainable Development Goals. The stories media professionals tell are most often controlled by the corporate sponsors of the media outlets available, and history remains their story. They're the storied status quo. In our program, and in this lab course, in our companion communications... Wait, 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 wait. Not necessarily shorten it, cut some of it out, and replace it by bringing the students in. Like, not only having the students there, but like, the, like, making it like a tour for the students that aren't there yet. Like, you, this is where you can. So, should it be? You want to make it appealing to them as well. Should it be like when my dad did backstage at Disney, where I go, I'm talking to the camera, breaking the third wall, and I go, and, and you, come along, come along, come and see what we're doing here. Like, I'm, I'm like. Like, I'm aware that there's an audience watching. Also, you haven't had that yet, so that's a good... Yeah, why not? Okay. Do it. Good, good, good. So, yeah, so put in there... Um, yeah, put in a note for me. Um, Culhane invites the... Breaks the third wall and invites the audience to tour with him. I think it's that little plus sign. So... That means, if you can put that in there too, that means that the camera work shouldn't be static. It should be a handheld camera following me so I can gesture like, oh, come over here, come over here. So it is like from the perspective of the people viewing, right? So if you can put in handheld, um, handheld camera. 
Colleen breaks the fourth wall and invites the students um, yes. to, uh, to tour the lab as he's talking, speaking directly to them, um, period. Also, this will use handheld camera to follow him around as if we're looking through the eyes of the visitor. So we bring the, uh, we bring the viewer in. I'll know what you mean once, uh... Mm -hmm. You know, we're using so many yes, techniques. Please do that. Um, this will, will be using a handheld camera uh, to represent mm -hmm. the perspective of the viewer who is now in the scene, like a reality TV show. Uh, this will be using handheld camera to re represent the perspective of the viewer in the scene? Yeah. Like a, like a live TV show. But that, that's good, you know, because what we're doing, if you think about it, in each of these intrigos, we are actually using the techniques and tropes that Hollywood uses. Yes. Right? So it's it's good to have these self-conscious techniques that we can discuss in class. Where students can say, oh, we used here, I can pause the video, but we used this idea to invite you in. Hey, there's Ava Luna. Ava would be probably interested in the, we looked at, she and I looked at the um, Blender avatar creation software for making a woman, uh, putting clothes on her and eyelashes and the stuff she's doing in The Sims. What? You're, you're off, you're mute. The one with the joints that you can turn into like a walking animation or something? Yeah. It's, you'll see it in, when, you, when you look at the tutorial. There's a new, new plugin, a new add-in for Blender that Make Human made. And we just looked at it, Ava and I, where we took a woman. I can show you really briefly, if you want. Well, when we finish this, I'll show you. Okay. So, all right. So, in our program, blah, 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 okay. Oh, in our program and in this lab course in our companion communications theory course, Envisioning Sustainability, we take the YouTube revolution seriously and endeavor to help you tell your stories across as wide a range of I'm going to say tubes and platforms possible, and thereby make history. We know that the right, with the right training and understanding of the postmodern craft of digital storytelling, leaning on deep traditions of applying narrative tropes and artful technique, you can take us all on a better hero's journey and counter the tragedies plaguing, plaguing us. Together we might be able to finally overwhelm the creators of real fake news and the prophets of doom and gloom with a vox populi, that means popular voice, that is firmly grounded in the best practices in sustainability sciences. To guide you on this awesome and urgent journey, we have the talents of the top-notch professional course and content developers and production professionals at USF's Innovative Education Studio. Let's use our green screen here at Rosebud to teleport over there to meet them. Culhane and his students stand in front of the green screen and the scene switches. Like Star Wars, like Star Trek holodeck visitors, they appear holographically in the Innovative Ed Studio where we started our course in Act 1's Intrigo. The stories and advice we get from these professional digital storytellers in this section of our course make our experience a kind of masterclass from those who live and breathe effective and innovative education and production. Listen to their insights and remind yourself as you struggle to master the art of media communication that they live in a Stranger Things kind of inverse world from you. Each time they do a story about sustainability, they need to master the science behind the story. While each time you try to communicate our field, we need to master the arts involved in storytelling. We make a perfect team, of course, and many of you might go on to consult on various architectural, infrastructural, web, television, film, and video game projects oriented towards sustainable development, where you may only have to develop the script and narrative, working as a team with media pros. In my own work, however, I found that some facility with production tech makes all the difference from going to script to screen, idea to model, and script to simulation. The sustainability job market is growing rapidly, and with it, demand for skilled professionals who can produce and present sustainability content. Let's hear from several sustainability professionals discussing the skills that are most in demand in the job market. The IE team is seated around a conference table. They have a digital whiteboard in front of them and Alexandra is up at it, taking notes and creating brainstorming diagrams. When each innovative ed professional speaks, a lower third says their title and position. Alexandra, I think the most important skill is the ability to tell a story. People need to be able to understand and connect with the sustainability message and that's where storytelling comes in. Diana says, I agree, and it's not just about telling a story, it's about telling in the way that is engaging and visually appealing. 
people are more likely to pay attention to content that's well produced and visually appealing. Jared says, and of course, it's important to be able to present sustainability content in a way that is clear and concise. People need to be able to understand the message quickly and easily, and that's where strong presentation skills come in. Alexandra says, these are just a few of the skills that are in demand in the sustainable media job market. If you're interested in a career in this field, it's important to develop these skills. There are many ways to develop these skills. You can tell that AI, that I had ChatGPT write this, right? Because this is a completely different tone. You can take courses and attend workshops or simply practice by creating your own sustainability content. The most important thing is to be passionate about sustainability and be willing to learn and grow. So I obviously want each of them but to I, say... I, first of all, I, I find this, this is this is the strong point of this. You have, um, this is very important. And then you know, this is very important. Leave this whole conversation in. Oh, uh, I'll, 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 i um, she can, she can unplug it with no, no fear, or I can unplug it. So I'm trying. She did. She can it. You can go with it. Okay, anyway. Okay, okay, she doesn't want to drive the car. No, she said today she wanted to drive the car. She did that last night, she said. Anyway. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry, go ahead. Okay, so, yeah, I, I like this, though. This is very important. I love this whole presentation. Here. Okay, and they may write their own. I mean, I, I had AI write for them because they didn't have them write it. But they, they'll probably want to say what they want to say because they're the professionals. So this is just a placeholder. Yeah. Suggestion. Okay. It's still good. Like, if it's only near as good as this, then straight up leave the whole thing. What is it? I did not say okay. anything. All right. We dissolve to the team playing in the innovative Ed VR headset room. On the screen in front of them is what the people in VR are seeing. Jared, we have these brand new facilities here at USF in our studio, in the library, in the 3D access lab, and more and more across the campus. Ready for you, player one. Uh, well, hold on. Um, keep in mind, here at USF, we put the courses, the courses also um, centered around uh, uh, sole online learners. Yes, but we want them to know that, that on campus, they've invested in all these facilities. Um, so he is- does that get them? Like, why don't you, for the online learners, um, also in general, you should like make a special website or something, if you don't have that, or like a special, I, I don't know, something to set them on par with the people who visit on campus. Because they're paying tuition as well, right? Yeah, but the thing is, so to take this course, if you're not coming to campus and working in my 3D Access Lab classroom, you have to have as a prerequisite a powerful enough computer to run Unreal Engine. If you don't, you can't take the class. And then we want them to know that they have all of these things at campus, plus an entire studio. Um, but you're right, I should have something in there about... Uh, I'll ask them about that because yeah, they they to pass the to pass the uh, whatever they call it the, um, in order to be launched, the course has to, yeah pass the requirement. Their team has to make sure it's compliant for everybody, or that it clearly states what the prerequisites are, so that nobody gets fooled and they take a course that they can't they can't use that they, they don't have the right equipment. Uh, okay, um, if you have the skills and the passion. You can have a successful career in the sustainable media job market. Alexandra says, and take it from us at Innovative Ed, if you have the vision, and this ties back to that Rene Dubois vision quote, so I have to keep that in and find a way to shorten it in the other intrigue of, if you have the vision, if you can truly envision sustainability and think it out in the loudest way you can, why then you might indeed just save the world. Bang! The screen shows a circle tunnel vis uh, transition to black and we hear the closing James Bond chord as text appears on the screen saying this is not the end. More tutorials will be added by your instructors and you creating more and more content of the students and teachers by the students and teachers for the students and teachers. Jump in and start creating today for a better world tomorrow. 
And then I, I just put the uh, James Bond chord so people know what it sounds like, which is really funny. Uh, oh, I like it. Nice, I like this. Five and six were very uh, good. Oh, does five and six work for you? All right. Well, we can um, yeah. we can stop for today because we've gone through them and let them sort of sit in your consciousness. I'll take your, I'll look at what we recorded. I'll take your notes into advisement. I'll spend the rest of the day uh, trying to work them in, and then. Uh, It'll get released to the team tomorrow, and Jared and Alexandra and Diana and Will will take a look at the Intrigo scripts, and then they'll start criticizing as well. Um, it's, a, it's a team process, but this way we'll have done a lot of the, the hard work. You, I mean, does it seem, from number one through six, as you see the over of the course, does it give you an idea of what you're going to be working on? Is there anything missing? You say, oh, wait a minute, I expected this, or I didn't know that so i don't talk a lot about video editing for example the, the major difference is that um yes the main difference is that this is going to be video it's harder to tell it's not an instruction it's a script right so um it can, it can vary a lot depending on the presentation yeah but if they do their job right and it's really punchy and, and fun and clever it's supposed to give you a saturated feel like this is what the field can do. If you really know the techniques, you can produce this. So it's it's supposed to be sexy in that regard. Yeah. Uh, I'll do the Audacity one tomorrow, and then the day after tomorrow I'll do, I'll finish the Blender thing. Okay. And then, if, yeah, the, key, the, key, the ones that are, that are the most complex are QGIS and Blender, and the avatar creation one, and the avatar creation one is not done, because I'm really struggling with like teaching people how to animate an avatar. But at least uh, like this pro. Oh, I was going to show you what, what I what I was showing Ava. Like it's not hard to create a human avatar. Let me boot up Blender for a second and share a screen with you. How do I share a screen? I go to stop watching, and I go to share a screen. And I share my screen. Oopsie. Go back. Go to Blender. All right. You should see now. What do you see? Do you see? Do you see my Blender screen? Yes. Okay. No. no? I can't. Let me go back to Discord and see what what you're seeing. Um, share screen. I'll just share this screen here. How about see what's in right now? Do you see? Oh, Blender, come on. So you don't. That's so weird. Why don't you see? All right, let me try it again. Share screen. Share Blender. Go live. Ah, now you see it, right? Yes? There's no maybe a different? It says that I'm sharing it. No, I don't see anything. You don't see Blender? So weird. Change windows. What, what do you see? You see just blankness? I see your face. No, but what if you click on click on my live stream in Discord? Which live stream? Uh, there should be three windows available to you. One is my face, one is your face, and one is the oh, live stream. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Now you're seeing Blender? Yes? I didn't hear. Yes. Okay, so look at this. Um, I go over oh, here. Because I have to go to bed later. Liter liter literally three to five minutes. It's that quick. Okay. So I have this plugin called Make Person for Blender, and I go to New Human, 
and I do it from scratch and I pick the gender. Would you like neutral, male or female? Male. Okay, male, young, old, child, baby. Over here. Young, Good. I guess. Young. Muscles, average, maximum. You want maximum. Average weight. Uh, I don't just... <laughs> average height. Completely average. Just make, just make it work. All right. So do average. Race can be African, Asian, Caucasian. You're a Caucasian, so we'll do Caucasian. And then you don't have breasts, so we don't worry about that because you're male. And then we say create human. And it puts in a one almost one meter tall being. I can get rid of the cube. And there, right, so there's, there's that person. Then you go to, what? It's bedtime. Okay, I was just gonna show you that then you go to Skins Library and we add a skin. Um, it can be a middle-aged Caucasian male or it can be a young Caucasian male. So we have all these different uh, skins. I not care less. Right, so, oops, I have to click on it and then add that skin. I'm sorry, I used the wrong one. All right, so then I've got that and then I click on this and there's the, the male. Then you can go through and you can start. So it's just like Ava's Sims thing. You go from the skins library, you go to the eyes, and you add a high poly eyeball, but you have to select, um, what do I have to do to do that? Load, low poly setup rigging is, oh, I have to do with rigging. So you go to the rigging and you add a rig that can be a standard rig. And then once you have the rig, you can add the eyeballs. And then once you have the eyeballs, and then you can turn off the view of the rig. Um, Guy looks like he's lobotomized. Oh, I know. It's awful, right? So I'm going to turn off the, uh, the rig. But he's not so bad. And then you can go to uh, go in and do the um, in apply assets. Of course, you want to have uh, eyebrows. And then you want to have there's eyebrows that about it. And then you can add the eyelashes so he's not going to look so robotic and then after you have the eyelashes then you can go in and add the hair and you can add teeth and a tongue so you've got all these different different things here and then you go to the clothes library and you can put in the metahuman clothing if you want and you can put in shoes so this one here makes it really easy for students to add it and because it has rigging you can then animate it so when i put in finally in the clothes library i can put in shoes all right so there's his boots there it is and then when you turn on the rigging which would be here then if i want to move this and i go into the pose mode then I can select a bone and I can rotate it and I can have him do the Egyptian, you know? So that's how, oops, right? That's how easy it is to, um, yeah, you have to, you have to know your bones, all right? So it's a, it's a brand new feature for Blender that lets you then animate and do all sorts of cool walks. So we can go over that some other time. So thank you very much, son. That was marvelous. And I will go ahead and order that book for you. Yes. Yes. Yep. All right. Thank you. Have a good night. night. Great being with you. Thanks so much. Bye.